disappearance day of our beloved Guru Dev, Nitya Lila Pradishtha, Om Vishnu Sahar, Ashto Tarasatha, Sri Srivan, A.C. Pantilidamta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada. I'm offering my millions of Dandava pranams, my Shraddha Pushpanjali, and his divine lotus feet. And I'm offering my equal Dandava pranams and Shraddha Pushpanjali, also to the lotus feet of my beloved Sikh Shaguru names. Om Vishnu Pad Ashto Tarasata Sri Shiva Bhakti Vedanta Narayana Goswami Maharaj and Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Ashto Tarasata Sri Shiva Bhakti Raksha Sri Dhar Goswami Maharaj Also to the lotus feet of all our Rupa Nuga Guru Bhaya and to all the Sridhandi Sanyasi Padrani, to all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas. <coughs> Again, we are so fortunate to be here in Rajmantala Tham uh, at the most exalted holy place, Sri Giriraj Govardhan next to Sri Manasi Ganga to be performing Raj Mandala Parikrama under the guidance of our beloved Guru Dev Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj and to be celebrating and remembering with separation mood the disappearance days of our very great charges And to remember also the transcendental relationships between them, their lasting relations, their eternal relationships. So today we want to try to uh, churn the nectar of the glorious pastimes, activities, character, qualities of our Srila Prabhupada A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. His glories are very, very vast and unlimited. Just as any pure Vaishnava, as any uh, Sharanagata Bhakta and Rasik Mahapagwa Vaishnava, all of them they are on the same level and the same platform. But even amongst them there is their specialities, their particular qualities and their contribution which they made in the preaching mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this world. How they were the instrument of Gauranga Mahaprabhu too and Nityananda Prabhu to deliver so many fallen souls to bring them to the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in remembering our Srila Prabhupada, I always like to remember the statement about him, which was made just after his disappearance by another great Mahabhagavad Vaishnava, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sri Goswami Maharaj when the disciples of our Prabhupada approached him uh, just after his appearance, they, uh, they asked him to hear the prayer which our Srila Prabhupada composed on the Jaladutta. And this heartfelt prayer, very dear to the hearts of all the Prabhupada disciples, and the followers of our Prabhupada throughout the world because in that prayer he expressed his mood how he was coming to the West to serve the order of Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur 
and how he was praying to the lotus feet of Krishna that if he would help him, if he would assist him in this great impossible mission, oh then, Srimati Radharani will become pleased with him. In that prayer, Srila Sridhar Maharaj noted there was a very great mood of helplessness, completely uh, feeling absolutely unable and helpless to perform this task. So, in that mood, he prayed to Krishna. At that time, as we know also, it was a very difficult journey on the Jaladuta, on the steamship crossing the ocean to come to the western countries, all alone. And how he was struggling with heart attack over many days. So in this condition, he was praying to Krishna. So Srila Sridhar Maharaj said, in that mood, our Srila Swami Maharaj was praying so helplessly that the divine power, the divine Shakti was forced to descend. It had to descend at that time. And therefore, Srila Sridhar Maharaj made his declaration, I declare him to be Shaktyavesh Avatar of Krishna Shakti. Shaktyavesh Avatar, meaning that without this Shakti, it is not possible to perform such amazing activity. Srila Sridhar Maharaj told prior to this great mission being performed by Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, many of us, he himself admitted this, many of us in the Gaudiabad, we thought perhaps this statement in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Priti Vite Yasa Nagaradi Brahma Sarvatra Prachar Roy Ve Moranam, where Mahaprabhu is telling that my name will be heard in every town and village in the in the whole world. We were doubting this, he said. We were thinking perhaps this is a colloquial kind of expression, but only here in India it will be everywhere. But when they saw what was actually accomplished, when Srila Sridhar Maharaj saw the grand campaign that was performed, this Brihad Vrdanga, then he admitted, yes, I declare him to be Shaktivesh Avatar. He cannot but be this. Because this is not the activity that could be done even by any general guru. Great gurus within this world, they can do so much preaching. But this level of preaching, he admitted, this can only be done through the direct potency of Krishna. Therefore, he said, I declare him to be Shaktivesh Avatar. Then, when he was asked, because you know, Shaktivesh, Krishna has unlimited Shaktis. Parasta Shaktir Vidhaya Shuryate. So many different Shaktis and potencies that he has. And there are many different types of. Turn the mic down a little bit. And there are many different types of Shaktivesh Avatars. Just like Prithu Maharaj is Shaktivesh Avatar, with the potency of maintenance, the maintenance of Poshana Shakti. Uh, Srila Narada Muni is also considered Shakti Avesh Avatar, because he has the Bhakti Shakti. And in this way, many different types. So when Srila Sridhar Maharaj was asked, which Shakti if you are declaring that he is Shakti of age, then which Shakti? And then Srila Sridhar Maharaj told, Nityananda Shakti. 
Vidyana Vidasha. Then he began to explain about this. And he said it was very clear in his mood of his preaching. Just as Sri Nityananda Prabhu, huh? just as Sri Nityananda Prabhu went everywhere, he went village to village by the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he went to the lowest persons. He did not avoid them. He went everywhere, even to the outcast persons who were not accepted by general society. And Nityananda's mercy flowed without any discretion. Akrona Paramananda Nityananda Roy Abhimana Shunya Nitai Nagari Nitai Abhimana Shunya He had no consideration, no false ego, and he went everywhere giving this Krishna praying. In the same exact mood, our Srila Prabhupada, he went to, to the very doorsteps of the lowest sections of human society in the Western world, and there he began his grand campaign. Uh, as our Srila Gurudev, when he uh, came to the Western world so many times, he told that Swamiji came with nothing. He had nothing, no one to help him, and simply he had his Guru Nishta and Krishna. And by himself he went into a middle of a park in New York City where so many low class persons were uh, taking drugs and alcohol and intoxications. And he stood underneath the tree, there in the middle of the park, with a pair of cartels. And he simply closed his eyes and began to chant, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabho Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta he simply chanted the names of Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates, and then he chanted the Maha Mantra. And some were coming, some were listening, some persons were also playing their little instruments and guitars and bongo drums, flutes, this, that, and taking part in his kirtan. And in this way, he attracted the hearts and souls of the ordinary people. So, this mood in which he came to the West with full dedication to the lotus feet of his, the order of his Guru Day, this is the most extraordinary example, practically, in the modern day, in our Guru Varga, how he came in such a helpless way and became completely empowered because of this mood of absolute surrender. So, we are sitting here today at this very auspicious place, the topmost place in all the world, in all the universe, at the foot of Giriraj Govardhan, by the mercy of this great Mahabhagavad Vaishnava. Those of us who have come from the Western countries, we know what condition of absolute ignorance, complete, uh, completely fallen, deem, keen, very low, very degraded, knowing nothing about what is the purpose of life, knowing nothing about who we are, what we are, why we are here, knowing nothing about why this universe is here, why everything is here. Complete darkness. And our Srila Prabhupada, with very, very great compassion and mercy, he entered into this situation, walking into the very citadel of Maya, of Kali, and penetrating just like Nityananda Prabhu holding his staff, piercing Kali, 
So Marshil Prabhupada also came armed with Harimam Mahamantra and pierced through <coughs> the heavy coverings of ignorance to reach the heart of the Jeevas and impart this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> Seemingly impossible task. And when he came and he landed in Boston Harbor, he again composed a prayer. There he saw for the first time, standing there in America, looking at the people, looking at the faces, looking at what is this Western countries in Kali Yuga. And he said to Krishna in his prayer, Oh my dear Lord, I don't know why you have brought me here to this place, this God-forsaken place. I can see here that all of the population is covered over with heavy layers of Tamagun and Rajagun. So I don't, know, I don't know how it will be possible for them to actually understand your message. But I know that since you have brought me here, you must have some purpose. Therefore, I am remembering your own words in the Srimad Bhagavatam, where you explained how it will be possible for them to understand your message. And then in his prayer, Srila Prabhupada quoted this five verses from second chapter, first canto, Srivatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Pridyanta Kshoki Vadrani Kidunoti Sukrit Satam. He told that in Srivat Bhagavatam, it is very clear that if someone hears your message and they serve the Mahabharavad Vaishnav Nitya Bhagavad Seva, then it will be possible. Why? Because you yourself. You will cleanse their heart. You have promised this in Srimad Bhagavatam. You will remove these layers of Rajagun and Tamagun. You will bring them to the level of Satvagun, goodness. You will enable them to understand uh, what is the uh, Bhagavad Tattva Vikyana. What is the absolute realization of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Supreme Bhagavan, Krishna. And then, a Vani Prasanna Manaso, they will become very pleased in their mind. And Mukta Sangha Srijayate, they will attain liberation from this condition. So in this way, Srila Prabhupada quoted the Srila Bhagavatam. And he told it to Krishna that only if you help me, then this will be possible. And he signed, his prayer, the insignificant beggar, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. And this was his mood. How humble he was. He was the actual personification of Srinamati Sudhich. Completely. And Tarogavi Sudhich, so tolerant. Without this, it would never have been possible. But because he was the living personification of the shloka of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sri Shastika, therefore he was able to live amongst us and tolerate the abuse, tolerate the disregard shown to him. Huh? And to at the same time give so much respect to everyone who came to hear even to the alcoholics lying in the streets, rolling in the drunken condition. He showed them respect even. Huh? He respected all as part and parcel of Krishna. He did not eliminate anyone. Huh? Anyone was a candidate for the mercy of Sri Gauranga in his eyes. And he preached powerfully. He became completely immersed in this mood. So much so, as our Gurudev told, this became his Udipan. Hmm? 
His utipan, his stimuli, was this Western preaching. This was his seva to his Guru Maharaj, to our Guru Varga, to Sri Rupa Goswami, whom he prayed to at Radha Namakar Temple. Please, O oh Rupa, O oh Jiva, I don't know how I will do it. I don't know how it will be possible. Please, you have to give your mercy. He prayed in this way. So his whole life was a preparation to come and deliver us and to deliver the whole world. So on this day of his disappearance, we are trying to remember what contribution he made for all of future generations of Vaishnavas. How he gave Srimad Bhagavatam, the essence of all Vedic Shastra, the essence of all knowledge. How he gave Sri Chaitanya Charitamritam to the world. The whole teachings and pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How he gave Sri Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasanamrita Sindhu to show everyone how to do Shuddha Bhakti. How he himself traveled unceasingly, untiringly to his bright old age. Huh? Never tiring for a moment, even if he had blazing fever of 105 degree temperature here in Vrindavan. If some dignitaries came, he immediately got up and he went and did his preaching with Seva. He never failed for a moment. And he showed us, his disciples, by his own example, how to sacrifice, how to give one's life for the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he engaged us in that way. And he requested us and he ordered us, go door to door, go everywhere in this world and preach this message of Sachinanda Gaurhani until every single house, until every single person has received this message and they have Srimad Bhagavatam in their home. Even once he said, you can bring so many murtis of Shishi, Radha and Krishna from India and we will sell them in the department stores just so that the people, they can become familiar with who is Radha and Krishna. And we can sell a little package with the instruction that every day you should put it on your mantle in your home and wave some incense in a circle like this and maybe chant this mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Any way that he could introduce he took the opportunity through any medium when he was told that he could speak to the whole world through the medium of television they told him we can record you and then you can speak and this can be distributed throughout the world he was ready to sit in Los Angeles and he already started to give Srimad Bhagavatam classes and lectures if he were here today there is no doubt he would be sitting daily and speaking to the whole world through the internet because his whole principle was yukta vairagyam anasakta sivishayam yitarham paryunjata nirbhanda krishna sambandhe yukta vairagyam ujjate krishna sambandha he told in his lecture so many times he says I have told you repeatedly that everything is connected to krishna there is nothing separate from Krishna. Utilize everything in the service of Krishna. And he himself did that. He was not afraid to utilize everything in this world. Any technology, any new invention, any facility. He was willing to take that and glorify Krishna with that. Without any attachment at all. And in his final days, when he could no longer travel, then he came to his eternal home, right here, Sri Vrindavan Dham. And he called to his bedside his very dear friend, his very dear servant, Sri Bhaktivedanta Narayana Swami. And he requested him with tears in his eyes. Please perform my samadhi. And also, in my preaching mission, I sometimes use very bold language and sometimes I also 
said something against my god brothers I should not have told. I want that you will give my apology to them. Then Srila Gurudev, Srila Narayan Maharaj told them, No, no, you have done nothing wrong. We understand why you have done this. Only to protect your disciples. You are very neophyte disciples. Otherwise they will go here and there. So, so we also use the same technique in our region. You have done nothing wrong. Very great humility he had. She remembered they said he was so humble at that time. And then he requested him. I tried my best. I came to the West and I captured so many. He used the word monkeys. Why monkeys? Because we know that the activities of monkeys resemble the activities of the Western countries' behavior. Right? So I brought them, I captured, I put a very big net and I captured so many. But I tried my best to train them. And to some extent I was successful. But they need so much more help. I'm requesting you, you please give your help to them. At that time, our Srila Gurudev told that he did not understand why he was being asked this question. Because he thought, by seeing so many of the leaders at that time, how boldly, how strongly, he thought that they were strong like thunderbolts. They don't know what help I can give them. Then, he said, later on, then I began to see, and I began to understand why he asked me to help them. So he was hesitating, and then our Prabhupada took his hands into his hands and he said, give me your word. Then Srila Gurudev gave his word. He said, I promise until my last breath, I will carry out your order as best I can. We are here today because of that. We are in this assembly because of this. There is a very intimate divine flow and divine connection for our upliftment and our deliverance. Uh, and there is a great contribution going on on the part of many of our acharyas and as Srila Bhaktivinoda Sridhar said, many unseen guardians also are helping us. But to those personalities who came into this world, who personally contacted us, we can never repay them. Impossible. We cannot even dream how to repay this debt. So only today we will make some attempt to glorify his divine body, his charitra, his character, and to pray for a drop of his mercy, so that we may actually become his followers. This is what our Srila Gurudev is trying to make us into, real disciples, real followers of Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, real followers of this Rupa Luga Varga, and real uh, aspirants for the mercy uh, of the side long lands of the servitors of Srimati Radharani. We are praying for this on this disappearance day of our Sri Prabhupada. of Srila Prabhupada in our assembly today, around 40 different disciples, very senior devotees who have rendered very, very significant service in their lives during the presence of Srila Prabhupada in his preaching mission and also after his disappearance up to the present day. So, <clears throat> as we do every year, we have a list of devotees and we make an attempt to give as many as possible an opportunity to speak, to display their hearts, uh, separation mood, and their devotion, their feelings of Nishta to Srila Prabhupada. And we generally go according to 
Mariada, as she would be calls on the senior Vaishnavas in a certain sequence. So we will make some attempt this morning to call on a few. We uh, request, if possible, that the uh, speeches can be limited to 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, and we will also have a session later in the late morning and then also in the evening time. So in our assembly, as in every year, the senior most uh, Vaishnavi amongst us who came to the lowest feet of Srila Prabhupada in 1966 when he first began his preaching mission in, in New York City, Compton Square Park, and has, with, without wavering for a moment in all these decades, she has gone on serving and glorifying Srila Prabhupada and uh, continuing to preach his message and his mission. We are requesting our a uh, very dear God sister, Shivati Shamarani Didi, to come and glorify First I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipable diction for the day. Nichalila Pravishta Om Krishna Pai Askotra Satisri Shima Shilabhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipable Shiksha Buddha Day Om Krishna Pai Askotra Satisri Shima Shilabhakti Vedanta Narayan Gosana Maharaj to all of our disciples succession and all the assembled devotees so you just heard two very beautiful speeches, which point to the offerings given by Sri Bhakti Vedanta Tirtha Maharaj and Sri Bhakti Vedanta Parmanava Maharaj. Although some of what Sri Padmanava Maharaj was saying, he did not first-hand experience, like the bums in the streets, the drunkards, who Shula Prabhupada showed respect to in the 60s, and Sri Tirtha Maharaj, who he had a first-hand experience of none of what he was saying. Yet still, by hearing, they imbibed our Shula Prabhupada's glories in their heart, and therefore they were able to express some feelings of separation and beautiful sentiments without the first-hand experience, just by hearing. I, on the other hand, saw the drunkards lying on the streets outside of Prabhupada's uh, temple in 1966, and I saw him dictating on the old-fashioned dictaphone machine, his Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamrita, teaching the Lord Chaitanya. I saw him standing under that tree at Tompkins Square Park. But unfortunately, I'm so far that I don't have the feelings of these two previous great speakers. So you'll excuse me that I'm just sharing words without any heart in it. In 1993, Shula Gurdjieff said to me, how do you know that your Shula Prabhupada is a pure devotee, a Mahabhava? So I said to him, well, it says in this scripture and that scripture, his behavior was this and that. So Gurudev said, how can you recognize his behavior? You can't. You can only think or guess that he's a pure devotee. And until you come to his level, you can never really understand or have faith in who he actually is. So excuse me that I'm just sharing words, but something is better than nothing. I received over 90 letters from our Shura Prabhupada, some general Krishna conscious instructions, and most of them in relation to the paintings that he had us do first for his temples and then for his books. For example, I was painting Cardamon Muni's uh, palace 
which flew in the sky, and how his wife, Devonti, who had been very austere for so many years, not even washing her hair or bathing, because she was so much absorbed in the service of her exalted husband, that she was dipped into a transcendental lake and bathed and beautified by 1,000 maidservants created by her husband. So I wrote to Shri Prabhupada and asked, how could she be bathed and decorated underneath the water? Was there a house under the water? How should I paint it? So Shri Prabhupada wrote back, just as there's uh, an art to practice so many mystic yoga practices, similarly there's an art for staying under the water. So no need to write house. Just show her under the water, being decorated and breathing very fine with her maid servants there. So there were so many letters that I received from Shua Prabhupada regarding instructions on the painting. I was there when he first installed the second Jagannath deities in all of the West. They were sent in crates to New York City. Shua Prabhupada had just come back from San Francisco where he held the very first Rathi Yatra festival. And before he returned to New York, he sent Baladev, Krishna, and then at last Subhadra. And then Shua Prabhupada came, and I saw how he gave the first installation ceremony of Lord Jagannath by placing them on three old chairs in his quarters at 26-second Avenue and putting his arms around Lord Jagannath and moving him with his own arms into place. I saw how he was dictating his chase in the Charitamrita and how the devotees would come in the mid-70s and bring him whatever country he happened to be in, bring him one book after another in a two-month period because he had given us a two-month deadline to produce 17 volumes of Chaitanya Charitamrita plus two volumes of the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam all at that time. And we have so many questions to ask about how to do the paintings because for us conditioned souls to manifest the spiritual world on canvas was not only difficult but impossible. So we had to ask him so many questions. So sometimes uh, we would phone his secretary. We were in Los Angeles. We would phone his secretary in India. He would ask Shri Prabhupada the questions and then phone back the answers. Or sometimes one of uh, his disciples would be going from LA to India and we, I would write the questions down. What did, um, for example, what did Rai Ramananda look like when he was discussing with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? How old was he? Did he have a mustache? What did the scene look like? Or in the first canto, what did the fire, sacrificial fire look like? So the devotees would take the written questions and bring it to Prabhupada in India by plane and then phone back to Prabhupada's answers. So I witnessed all those things. I heard Srila Prabhupada's first lectures on Chaitanya Charitamrita, which later on were transformed into books, into his lecture books, into the uh, introductory chapters of his teachings of Lord Chaitanya. I heard how he would tell in 26 Second Avenue when half the devotees just coming out of Hippiehood would have big blankets on their heads like tents or teepees, half asleep as Srila Prabhupada would speak, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu feeling the ecstasies of chanting Harina and his Gopal Mantra would go to his Gurudev, Sri Isarapuri, and tell him, how is it that I become mad by these mantras that you've given me? And then Prabhupada would end his lecture by saying, tomorrow we will find out the reason that he became mad. So he left us on cliffhangers. I heard personally Srila Prabhupada's lectures on Sri Sanatana Shiksha, where Srila Prabhupada hinted 
as he gave always his own glories through the medium of talking about the greatness of pure devotees in general. For example, in the chapter on Aishwarya and Madhurya, which Shri Prabhupada gave at the end of 1966, starting in November of 66, he began giving Chaitanya Charitamrita to lectures. And then in January of 67, just before he went to open his second Iskand temple in San Francisco, he was speaking about Mahaprabhu's teachings to Sri Sanatana Goswami about the opulences of Lord Krishna, how Krishna takes birth in one universe. And then in the second, the very next kana, which is a very small fraction of a second, Krishna takes birth in the second universe. And in the third kana, fraction of a second, he takes birth in the third universe. And then when he's in the third universe, it's the second second of the second universe and the third second of the first universe. So if you count, Sri Prabhupada is describing to all of us ex-hippies and still trying to come out of hippiedom. Prabhupada is describing to us the opulence of Krishna that if you consider that he stayed in the material world for 125 years, how many kanas or fractions of seconds are there? That's how many universes Krishna is in at the same time. And at the same time, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, for 48 years, he's also in so many universes. And what is Sri Prabhupada's glory in this? Besides giving that, propagating and broadcasting it to the world so that we can forget our own imaginary pastimes and imaginary emotions and enter into the real emotions and pastimes of the Supreme Lord. His glory is that he himself is in all those universes with Radha and Krishna simultaneously. Those billions and billions of universes Srila Prabhupada is in participating in all the pastimes of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna and all the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu eternally, not only throughout the universes of the material world, but also in Goloka Vrindavan, Braj, and in Swayatri of Goloka also. So, throughout the day and night, we didn't know this until we met Srila Gurudev. Where did Prabhupada go after he left this world? After he left not this world, because he's here now. As Srila Gurudev explained to us when I first met him, just as Krishna never left the assembly of the gopis when he apparently disappeared in the Rasa Lila, but rather he was hiding in one of the countries just to experience the deep love and separation of the gopis. So Srila Gurudev explained that our Srila Prabhupada is also hiding and watching and also guiding and dictating and arranging things for us and making things happen by his mystic powers. For the pure devotee, who is the emblem of all knowledge, mystic potencies, the eight mystic potencies, constitute just a tiny fraction of his opulences. So by Gurudev's mercy, we found out exactly where Prabhupada is and what he's doing throughout the times of the day. Just as you read in the prayers of Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, Srila Viswanath Chakravarti Thakur, how they want to serve Srimati Radhika and all the eight Praharas or their 24 hour and eight pastimes. Those exact services are being performed right now by our Srila Prabhupada. At the same time, he is present in all of his books. Srila Gurudev may give just a couple of sentences. For example, Srimati Radhika is chastising Krishna by speaking to the bumblebee in separation. And she is recalling from her own left-wing point of view 
how cruel and cheating Krishna is. And how he, I remember, Srimati Radhika is saying, I remember how as Vamadi, he was such a cheater. Bali Maharaj was ready to surrender everything, yet he cheated him. So we hear that and we might think, oh, Vamadi is a cheater, and thus we commit offenses and go to hell. Therefore, just as Shula Gurudev is helping us to understand our Shula Prabhupada, it's very difficult to understand Shula Gurudev without the books of Shula Prabhupada, who has an entire chapter in the eighth canto, two chapters at least, on the glories of Shula Vamadev. So, 